is by far my favorite workshop that we have for many reasons. Uh, one, it's because I lead it, so <laughs> it's always going to be better. Two, I do meal planning every week, so this is super easy. I don't necessarily have to do a lot of prep work for doing this, but I did. I, I sat down at the table this afternoon and tried to get my thoughts all in order because I want you guys to be able to leave here with great steps to take home and to start implementing right away. And it is kind of fun to go through and try and get into my brain of what do I do for meal planning? Because <laughs> it is second nature. So I didn't always meal plan <laughs> and I didn't always meal plan for a family of four. I, for a little history of, I guess for me and what, where I've, my journey, is I grew up, my mom, she had a catering business I helped her with. And so cooking, healthy eating wasn't always, well, I guess my dad, always, he had a garden that we, massive garden, probably I'd say the size of this building <laughs> um, that I would always help with. To this day, I still have issues eating green beans because <laughs> We would always have to go and pick the beans, bring them home, lay out a big newspaper and snip the, <laughs> snip the ends and then snap them in half. And then my mom would can a bunch of green beans. My sister loves green beans, but I just, I don't know. There's something about the texture and just the memories. That I'm like, no, no I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> Thankfully, my daughters like green beans, so, but I haven't made them do the things that I had to do. Um, where was I? Oh, so my mom had a catering business, we had a garden, I, I was brought up knowing how to cook and I knew the importance of being able to cook and bake and watch what I eat and, and make best decisions as I can. I, I'm not perfect and I didn't grow up perfect where we had all organic food and grass fed meats and so that over the years took some learning to do but um, with patience and resources that was provided for me growing up. I, I'm, I'm here now <laughs> teaching how to meal plan. Um, whenever I was kind of going through some of the stats for tonight, the biggest thing that really stuck out with me was, I mean, well, what's going on right now and just the increase of diseases and cancers viruses, whatnot, I, I feel like the best thing that we can do isn't necessarily, I, I don't know if the general public or government or churches or families, they're not in charge of our health. We are in charge of our health. And the best thing we can do is take care of our internal health. So a lot of times that's that takes practice and it takes discipline, but it's something that we all have the tools to do it or the resources. And if you don't, then coming out to classes like this, getting that resource can help you. Um, and it's meal planning doesn't have to be this overwhelming, stressful thing that you do every week. It's the whole purpose of it is to decrease your stress and to help with budget, to help with taking time away from sitting there and being like, what am I going to fix? <laughs> what am I going to feed my family? Or just being like, eh, never mind. I'll just, I'll just go and go out to eat and, and whatnot. But so there's three principles when it comes to, or sorry, let me backtrack. The biggest stat that I went, the most recent stat that I came across was uh, with diabetes or pre-diabetic one in three people are diabetic or pre-diabetic in our country. And I find that quite staggering. One in three, one in three. And now there are certain uh, type one diabetes is a necessary, like something that, that just, it is what it is. But type two and even type three, which is now, it's called juvenile diabetes. It used to be for more Alzheimer's, but it's, I feel like that can be preventable. So this is one tool that we can use to help prevent some of the diseases around us. Um, there's three principles when it comes to meal planning that I try to 
always look back on or it's it's always in my head and try to teach no processed food um life-giving nutrients and if you can get more food by god than food made by man that's going to help with preventing a lot of those diseases or um anything else that as far as health related i have i've tried almost every fad out there as far as eating wise goes uh i mean i i, I really have i'm trying to think what like let's name atkins i've done atkins diet <laughs> i think i was probably 20 20 years old when i tried that one uh, i've done full-on vegan because i read a book where it talked about inhumane treatments of animals and i mean it was it was graphic and i was like Ugh, i don't want to eat any of that and i grew up on a farm so my family didn't understand that part and that was fortunately a very short time period that i did that but i remember taking a cheesecake to thanksgiving and i mean it was it was full of sugar it was full of sugar so a lot of the vegan <laughs> diet is it's not necessarily the best thing because there's still lots of sugar in there and lots of preservatives so I've tried that one, I'm trying to think what else I've tried. But I mean, there's low fat. low fat, yeah, low fat, low calorie, low everything, which when it comes to that, and we'll try and get into it a little bit, but always choose full fat because low fat, they have to take something out. And whenever they do that, they generally have to put something in and that's sugar or preservatives. So the, but again, going back to that principle of food by God or life giving nutrients, the closer it is to its original form, the better. Like the more you start getting it further away from that as far as, I mean, if you're going to eat a straight up apple or apple pie, <laughs> I mean, uh, there's an obvious difference there. And But it's because you've taken that apple and you've taken it or added things to it. You've cut it up. You've put flour, sugar, and whatnot in it. So the closer you are to that form, the more life-giving nutrients you're going to get. Um, geez. Margarine, no lie, is one molecule away from plastic, from being plastic. So let's just get on the butter train again, shall we? Um, butter, lard, it's all like, I feel like back in the 50s, they, they kind of had that right. Um, the lard, oh, yeah, yep. Right, right, yeah. Uh, I was... Whenever I was getting ready for this, I was talking to a friend, and she said her her husband it, like was leading us into actually sitting down and going through, okay, what are we going to plan? Um, prior planning prevents poor performance. So that's a lot of times people don't necessarily want to sit down and plan, but with anything, with any sports or any tests or anything that you're preparing for, you want to sit down and prepare for it. You can't just go out there and expect to have highest performance whenever you haven't even sat down and planned for it. So some of the things that we'll talk about is actually sitting down. First, let's write out some goals, health goals, and then we have to figure out how are we going to achieve those goals, and that's where we have to prepare. Um, in meal planning, it, it takes out stress, it takes it sticks to the budget, it takes time, so you're not just sitting there taking time away from family, or if you want to go and invest your time in something else, meal planning is something that's just, it's, it's going to become second nature. So how to, you guys, and feel free, ask questions, interact, let me know what's going on in your heads, <laughs> any speed bumps or blocks that you might think is on your on your path that you would like to try and simplify i guess uh anyone here have heard the dirty dozen clean 15 we've all we've all heard about dirty dozen have you heard about dirty dozen yeah every year the environmental working group comes out with a new list of dirty oh, dozen clean 15 year. every year yeah most of the time it stays the same but sometimes they add another like it'll be like dirty dozen plus two or uh, but this year is dirty dozen plus one um, but 
So the dirty dozen, this is where whenever it's time to go grocery shopping, you wanna try and stick more to organic. Clean 15, you can pretty much, it's, it's cleaner, so you don't have to buy necessarily organic. You can go more conventional. Anyone wanna guess what's on dirty dozen? Apples. Produce, produce. Apples. <laughs> Apples, yes. Surprisingly, no, really? that is not. I know, here I've been buying a lot of organic yeah, broccoli. I, do too. <laughs> I mean, if you can buy all organic, go for it. But sometimes my budget doesn't necessarily, I'd rather go, I, and I do say this, if you're, if you're on a budget and you're trying to figure out where you can spend your money to get, you know, the biggest, I, I guess, what is it, the most bang for your buck? I would always choose the meats first. If you're going to have, I would always get grass-fed organic meats versus getting everything organic produce. So that's, uh, just remember that if you are buying more conventional produce, soak them. I, anytime I come home after a grocery run, I fill my sink up with water and apple cider vinegar and I threw all my produce in it and let it soak for probably 30 minutes. Just mind that it will get on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will get your ass. Yeah, so yep. And there's been times I've completely forgotten about it and two hours later, it's, <laughs> they're still floating in my, I'm like, oh. And the water is so gross. So what I recommend is filling it up, letting it soak for at least 30 minutes, drain it, and then fill it up again to kind of, or at least wash it off. Um, uh, usually like a sink full for a cup of apple cider vinegar. I put a cup. One cup to how much water? I don't know. Whatever. How much my sink holds. Oh, and a whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Gallon maybe? Is it generally a gallon? So there's a, there's a difference between oil or vinegar using that? I mean, you can, you, you can use, you can use white vinegar too. That's fine. I thought vinegar was a little more expensive. I mean, but it's, but it's, I use it for other stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you get apple cider vinegar at Sam's and Costco, like the big, bigger ones. Um, strawberries is like number one, buy organic. Spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, and tomatoes that goes for cans as well. Um, generally, uh-huh, yep. Strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, potatoes, and the extra is hot peppers. But you can go to, I think it's ewg.org, and they, they'll have, like, they'll have this list. And you can, they also have cute little cards that you can print off and put in your wallet or whatever. Whenever you're grocery shopping, you can refer back to that. Would you do something like that? Really? Yeah. Always yeah. buy organic. I know. Blackberry. <clears throat> no. Yep. And usually uh, with produce, the harder, like the surface, the outer surfaces, you don't have to buy organic. Okay. Like bananas or avocados, things like that. Pineapples. Anything that's on the dirty dozen, I really do try and stick to purely organic. Okay. So if you but I'll still, I'll so still throw them in the what sink. And how do you throw them in the water? Just in the carton? No, so I'll, I'll take them out of the carton and just dump them in. Oh. All of it in. <laughs> I do generally put fruit on one side because I have a double, and then vegetables on the other side. <laughs> and whenever you soak them in vinegar, they do last longer. Mm. And that 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. No. Which, again, you would think it does, but it doesn't. I promise. I do it every week. <laughs> and my girls don't say anything to me, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like if they're not going to say anything, it's probably, it's fine. Um, okay. Any questions so far? I have that uh, spray that 
they do have a lot of those sprays, which is fine too. I just don't use those. Anyone want to know how I meal plan? Yeah. Okay, great. Good. That's why you're here. Perfect. So we are going to get right into it because um, I don't want to. I mean, I could, I can go off on tangents, and we could be here all night, but um, let's not. <laughs> Anybody here, when it comes to groceries, have a budget? I do have a budget. A lot of times I, well, actually there for a while I kind of forgot about that budget, but um, I have a, a wonderful husband that keeps me focused. <laughs> uh, he doesn't notice it too much though, so <laughs> he's not complaining. Um, my budget, I'll full disclosure, for family of four, I do, I try and keep between the 800 to 1,000 a month. Um, family of two, when it was just me and my husband, we were closer to 400 a month. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> don't go to Costco, don't go to Sam's every other week. <laughs> um, but there's, and that's being, like for me, that's, that's just, whenever we got married and I, I really understood nutrition that was one thing that I wasn't really going to <clears throat> budge on. I did not want to go back to my undergrad years eating ramen noodles and <laughs> packaged little bagels that could, could last forever on the shelves. Uh, and a lot of times, if I'm closer to my higher end side, it's because I'm getting more staples, like almond flour, cassava flour, arrowroot powder, like things that are going to last me for a few months. So that's like we're, we do, we are closer to the 800, sometimes less than that. Kind of depends if my girls are going through a growth spurt. Sometimes I feel like, especially in summer, it's amazing how growth spurts happen during the summertime. All they want to do is eat because they're home all day. Um, so I sit down, I look at my budget, I look at what my staples are and I do, Throughout the month, I do keep an eye on like my flowers and my, I have noodles and, and things like that that last a little bit and I see if they're lower or whatnot. And I try and prepare the rest of my grocery bill on if I'm going to be having to get some more staple things. But generally, and I've done this where if it's just me going grocery shopping just for me, I can keep it under or around 75 a month or a week, $75 a week. Yeah, I, I do shop, I shop at Aldi generally every week. Like that's, that's my Aldi. Oh, Aldi. Mm -hmm. They have really good organic selections and they have good meats too. Like they have grass fed, ground beef. I mean, they don't have a huge selection as far as like the cuts of beef, but they have ground beef, and sometimes they've got lamb in there, and their chicken is organic, so. Um, no, nope, up on Clemson, yep, yeah. Killian. Yeah, it's like Pharaoh and Killian Road, yep. That's where I go, and it's not really, I don't think it's the best one out of all the ones in Columbia. I think Lexington one is better, but even the Garner, Garner Ferry, yeah, Where's that one's good. That one's bigger, I think. So Aldi is probably, Aldi and Kroger and Sam's now is like my top three that I shop at. But I also do some online shopping at Thrive Market. I don't know if anybody's heard of that one. Thrive Market, it's kind of, um, I think you have to, well, I think it's a member, like a year membership that you do. I think it's like 60 bucks for the full year. And that's more for like my noodles, my flowers, my pantry type shopping. So I don't do that maybe once, once a month or once every two months. Same with Sam's or Costco. I don't go there every week. I do that. I try and limit Costco to like once every six months <laughs> because when you go there, it doesn't matter if you already went grocery shopping, you can still spend a lot of money there. Yeah. Right, right, and that's, 
and a lot of times even even with oils and things like that like if it's on the shelf for a long period of time like a really long period of time it can go bad it could go rancid so i mean if you're not feeding an army or eight kids then i don't know i feel like you can get away with all the or Kroger or Publix or things like that. So those are my top three stores. So what I recommend is you got, there's probably five things to, to do as far as meal planning and prepping. First, you gotta know what your budget is and you gotta figure out healthy recipes. So this isn't a workshop where I'm just gonna tell you just fix whatever I am going to throw in. You gotta get some healthy recipes in there because most likely if you're here, you wanna make better, healthier choices. So find healthy recipes. I mean, I don't know. There's a ton of healthy recipes on Pinterest, on the internet, everywhere. There's a ton of healthy recipes in this nice little book. <laughs> um, so pick out your recipes and I do not like to cook every day. So I'm whenever I'm meal planning, I'm making sure I can at least get two to three days out of the week where I can get that already made on my meal prep day. So I don't have to worry about it until maybe three days later. So once you have your recipes, when's your planning day? So my planning day is Sunday. That's just the easiest day for me. We go to church, I come home, my husband knows it, my girls know it, they know that I'm sitting down and I'm getting my recipes out, although at this point I don't have to because we don't have a ton of variety in my house, <laughs> like basically chicken or beef or meatless. And we do re just kind of have the same thing every week, but no one's complaining yet, so I'm fine with that. <laughs> it, it really does make it simple. And at the end of tonight, all you need to know is you just need to have at least five different sauces in your fridge that you can fix with anything. Like you can just throw some sort of like an almond butter, turmeric type sauce on a chicken. Or you can put some, I don't know, liquid aminos and some other spices on beef. Like it's just it, really at the end of the day, it's just about the spices and the sauces. So my day is Sunday. I will, if I decide it's time for a change up, I will go through my cookbook and I'll be like, all right. And I do try and get my kids involved in the planning because they're the ones that are generally eating the most. So, um, and it's good for them. And, and both of them, they help me cut up vegetables. They help me cut up fruit. So the more, if you have kids, the more that you can get them involved the better for you and for, for them because then, I mean, they're going to understand the importance of it. Third or fourth thing, I don't know what list I'm on, but grocery list. So once you have your recipes, go through your fridge. But at this point, you probably have next to nothing in your fridge. So you're making your grocery list. I have an app where I will sit and go through my cabinets. This app is called Our Groceries. And all I have to do is just put in whatever I need. So on my list right now, I have almonds, olive oil, almond butter, beef, chicken, all that stuff, because I'm going shopping. I know it's not usually my day, but. I'm... I can go less than shopping though. Oh, see? I know. See, that's probably one of the biggest things why I would get an Alexa is for that. Then I get to the store, Right. That's right. That's right. I mean, I remember growing up and watching my mom make a list on the back of like a an envelope, like a bill envelope. Or she would just do that. I'm like, oh, that's great. I mean, and I've gone through where. I printed off and laminated and used white or like the dry erase board markers, like, oh, I need this. And I'm like, oh, this is just getting too much. I'll just. Then you don't have it with you when you need it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if you want a nap or if you want to go old style and just write out the list, but make your grocery list based on your menus 
that you're making. Because the worst thing is going to the grocery store and not having your list. Actually, this, that's the second worst thing. The absolute worst thing is going to the grocery store when you're hungry. Do not do that. Do not do that. Because there's just weird things that end up in your cart, and you're like, well, I bought it, so I might as well eat it. So, no. Make sure you go right after you've eaten, and then stick to your list. It's going to keep you on your budget, and it's going to keep you purely focused on those healthy choices that you're trying to implement into your nutrition. So once you have your grocery list, go shopping. Me, I do order online. I get, I have the Instacart. Um, I don't know. Have you guys heard of Instacart? And a lot of the stores now, I mean, a lot of the stores now, probably all of them, they have the online either pickup or delivery. I, I will say the Instacart delivery is better because if you choose pickup, it's not necessarily that day that it's ready. <laughs> like Kroger, if you choose pickup, you're choosing like two or three days after. So if you really want to plan, maybe plan to go to get your groceries. If you're doing it online, um, just make sure you're looking at when their pickup is. But a lot of the ones that maybe don't have the Instacart, but I, I have Instacart. Instacart is, so it's an app. It has different stores, and almost all the major grocery stores now are, have this. So there is, like, you'll have, like, a delivery fee or something like that, but they also have, like, an express member membership where it's 100 bucks a year, but it saves you from paying constantly delivery fee. And it actually, like, the prices are not that much different than if you went to the grocery store itself. I mean, they're, they're going to be a little bit higher, but I found it's anywhere between... 50 cents to 75 cents higher on like on the website versus going in and shopping yourself. Um, and I do find the quality of the groceries that they're getting is probably better than what you necessarily would find at the store because they're, they have access to like the back so they can get like the more fresh. <laughs> um, but all you do, so you just choose whatever store. So the idea, so I pick Aldi and then I just go grocery shopping based on, I mean, they've got. Do you always do it online? You don't go to the store? Lots of stuff? I mean, maybe once every two weeks. I, I might stop in if I, like, if I just need a couple things I forgot, then I'll go to the store. But my main <clears throat> grocery shopping is on That's here. Sunday. Yep. Instacart. Yep. Instacart. And you deliver it to my house, usually within a couple hours. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, leave it at the doorstep. <laughs> and they don't charge you to do that? How I, because I'm, like, I have the, like, the premium or whatever where I paid, like, the express, but I forget what it what it is. I don't know. It's, I've had, for the past year, 40 orders placed. Which I don't. That, that's that's it's been. Leave them on Sunday. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll order it at like 10 a.m. and then get it delivered by the time I'm back from church. Like already there. I'm like great. I wasted zero time going to the grocery store. Yeah, some of them do, but a lot of most of the time it's just in grocery bags. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll go through, I'll pick exactly what's on my list, and then check out, and within two hours, it's right at my door. And once they're there, I fill up my sinks, the vinegar, and throw everything in there. And then I'll put, either I'll, most of the time I do like, once I have my groceries, once they're soaked, rinsed off and everything, that's when I'll just get to it, and I'll cut up vegetables, I, I do try, like, I'll peel my carrots, I'll peel potatoes, I'll chop a bunch of vegetables up, put them in containers, put them in the fridge. Same thing what with my lettuce? fruits. You don't put lettuce in the um, no, no, I don't put lettuce in the sink. Don't put lettuce in the sink. Just put, like, harder vegetables. Do you buy, like, the organic lettuce? Like, do you keep them very I do, but I will rinse them off as well. 
because yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the lettuce. Mm -hmm. I'll do that and then uh, rinse it off with water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You never can be too safe, especially if it's in plastic. Even if it says organic, pre-washed, but I don't know what they're washing it in. So I'm like, I don't know. I could, I maybe I'm a little bit more paranoid, but meh, I don't care. Less pesticides that you can get in your body, the better. So it's incredible how much pesticides are on fruits and vegetables and lettuce and ugh. And if you don't think for one second, like that's affecting your body, it's affecting your hormones, it's affecting your cells. You want to try and minimize that as much as you can. And it takes an extra 20 seconds to rinse it off. Even if you're just rinsing off in water, just do that. So I cut up all my fruits and vegetables. I will also cook some chicken and brown some beef and put it in containers. So again, like I said, sauces are going to be very helpful. And, oh, I so we have... And a lot of people do this. You know how they have like an, an idea, a meal idea for per day. So like meatless Monday or taco Tuesday or I don't know what else. What's a Wednesday or Thursday? For, I don't know. But um, two or Tuesday. yeah, <laughs> two for Tuesday wings. <laughs> Most families have a pizza night. We do have a pizza night on Wednesday. Every night, pizza night. I make the crust. I make it up. Uh, Yep, I use cassava flour um, and arrowroot. So cassava is a root vegetable. It's like a, you know, potato, I guess, kind of turnip. Um, like what's my topping? I put tomato sauce, that like pizza sauce I make out of, I'll blend tomatoes up or, um, and then goat cheese and turkey pepperoni, half and half. Goat cheese is because of mozzarella. Yeah, yeah, just because we're dairy free. My girls are dairy free in my house. And goat is fine. Goat is not considered dairy. It's not considered dairy. <laughs> dairy is beef, dairy is cows. Yep, yep, yep. So dairy free can be goat as well. Um, but yeah, that's what I put on it. Like we had that last night. Yeah. 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 And then he, and then he can eat that or drink that. Huh. Interesting. Or he should try not having dairy. <laughs> So then he doesn't have to, yeah, 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 once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while he gives himself a little treat, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, I do, but a lot of times I will just have vegetables on the side for the girls. Like they, if they're picky, that's what they're picky about, what's on their pizza. Half the time, Scarlett, my youngest, will, she doesn't even want pepperoni on there. So she'll like pick off the pepperoni. So then I'm like, okay, I'll just do half pepperoni, half just cheese. And then she'll go into a stage where she wants pepperoni. So it's like, and my girls, I mean, they'll eat a whole pizza themselves. Like they'll share a whole pizza, wow. four pieces <laughs> each. So. <laughs> so Randy really gets upset when he comes home Wednesday evenings and there's no pizza left. <laughs> yeah. Pizza till he gets home. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I'll have, like I'll get, whenever I'm at Sam's, I'll grab one of the cauliflower crusts with regular cheese on it, just so he that he can have that. He's, he doesn't have to be dairy-free. Um, but I don't know what he's complaining about because I don't have the pizza either. I usually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Which I've made it. I've made cauliflower crust, but this is so much easier with the cassava flour. Um, cauliflower and zucchini crust, it just, if you're making it yourself, is really watery, so you have to really squeeze the water out. Um, but I do, I, I like the cauliflower crust pizza too. 
So that's a lot of times, yeah, they do. Trader Joe's, yep, yep. Sam's does have it, yep. In the fruit, yep, frozen section, yep. So Sunday, I've cut up my fruits and vegetables, put them in containers. Uh, a lot of times I'll get like those mason jars and I'll fill up some like cut up vegetables with lettuce and I'll put some of the cooked chicken on top as well. So that's good to go for Randy and for myself and for the girls, but. Yep, yep. Um, and then I will also cook a couple extra veg, like I'll cook vegetables. So I'll steam some green beans and then I'll drain it and add some ghee and some salt on it, put it in a container, put it away. I'll roast some sweet potato fries, put that in a container, put that away because that's kind of, that's what we're going back and forth with this month. <laughs> like I'll have a piece of chicken and some vegetables for the girls. So, so basically you're just eating leftovers mm -hmm. rather than cooking yep. fresh. Yep. And I don't have a microwave. Yeah, so you I can know. live without a microwave, I promise. <laughs> I haven't had a microwave forever. Never no. And if you have one, don't Cities step in. That's right. Put tea in there. That's what my mother-in-law does. She puts all of her tea in, in her microwave. That's like where that's stored, huh? Because it's just it's stored there. So when you heat up your food or meals, how do you cook them up? Either oven or stovetop, or toaster oven. Like toaster ovens nowadays are pretty quick. Yeah, cool. I. That's right. That's right. Eating food cold was never, I never understood that until I started, uh, well, until Randy and I got married and he ate food cold. I was like, do you want me to heat that up? He's like, no, why would you do that? No, <laughs> kind of got that yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of this is just like food is not designed necessarily in, I'm the first person, I feel like I always would get struck by lightning if I said this, but it's not designed to make me feel good. It's designed to give me energy and nutrients so my body can function and heal how it's supposed to. I don't, I mean, and trust me, I'm the first one. I, I'm not just a sweet person, I like salt too. So it's like, sweet and salty, I'll take it all. But it's not there, like, so I can just savor it and enjoy it. It's there to give me what my body needs so I can go and serve and do things that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, we waste so much time and energy on trying to make things look pretty as far as food, like presentation. And I mean, a lot of my recipes in here, I had a hard time getting pictures for these because they did not look pretty. Because <laughs> they're they weren't they're not designed to look pretty. They're designed to be fast and easy, and everyone enjoys the taste of it. But it's not that's not what it's about. It's so I can move on and go do what I'm supposed to do. I used to make bread. I had a bread machine. That did not make down make the move down to South Carolina with us, but I did make bread. You don't anymore. I don't, no. So you don't eat bread anymore. I don't. Um, I will let my girls and Randy because he he can he can handle gluten and I cannot. So really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I don't I I'm I don't get sick over it, but I mean I do get like that gluten belly after eating it. So I'm like, oh, no thanks. And I, don't, I mean, I just don't feel the greatest with it. So, but my girls, they're growing and they don't have certain reactions with it. Randy doesn't, so I'll throw it in the fridge. But whenever I'm buying bread or bagels or things like that, I'm looking for uh, stone ground, should be on that list, sprouted, sprouted or stone ground should always be on there. It doesn't have to be both, but one of those. Is Ezekiel bread? Ezekiel bread, yep. Yep. And they've got a great selection of like English muffins. They have wraps. They have they have a lot more products out there now. Um, but I don't know, I should. Stone ground or sprouted. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 And you should like the better for you, bread should be in the freezer because that's they're going to be preserved longer. 
Um, okay, what else do I do? Oh, I make my veggies and whether I'm steaming them or baking them or roasting them. And then I will make like a treat for like the girls' lunch now that our oldest is back into school. I have to send some lunch with them. Uh, so I'll do like muffins or like oatmeal energy balls or something. I'll make a bunch of those and put those in the freezer as well. So that's like the basic what you have to do. No, breakfast. <laughs> breakfast. Yes. Let's get to let's get to planning. <laughs>